here at BDIA Dental Showcase and it's early, early doors on Saturday morning and I was the first one in at 8 o'clock. Don't know, ask me why I came here at 8 o'clock. I think it's because I know I'm going to slope off early. So um, um, anyway, so I thought I'd do a little piece of camera while there's nobody around and there is nobody around really. I've been around taking a few pictures but the place is pretty deserted just to sort of give you a bit of feedback on the exhibition. Now, the exhibition, when I walked in, because I, we come up from first Wednesday night and then we stay until Saturday afternoon, looked pretty impressive. The usual, very slick, uh, easily the best dental exhibition, I would say, uh, for equipment anyway. And there's quite a bit of, uh, of, quite a few lectures going on here, CPD and stuff like that. But hasn't really been matched by attendance numbers, even though for some reason, people don't like Excel. Don't ask me why. They um, they prefer to go to Birmingham. Even the people from London don't like Excel. They go to Birmingham. So uh, everyone's been complaining that it's quiet. But then that's sort of a, a hobby, you know, uh, a BDIA, BDTA as it was. They were supposed to empty in the bins. They're very good with the bins around here. They empty them about every 20 minutes. And um, yeah, so everybody complains. And they don't like Excel. So more London people, I think, go to Birmingham and go to Excel. But um, anyway, so leaving aside the moaning, the, the other big story is that uh, BDIA, I think, have sold the rights to Dental Showcase and to um, George Warman, who apparently runs Dental Update. This is the thing. Dentistry is like a, such a small profession and it's like uh, everyone knows everything. I don't know anything. I know nothing about what's, you know, the, <laughs> this is the place to catch up on the gossip, really. This is just this is a gossip fest. In addition to selling a few bits of equipment, that all people do is just talk and gossip. And so that's the big story, is that the, the show's been sold, nobody knows what's going to happen. And it has got um, an impact for us. Excuse me one. <laughs> Excuse me a minute while I sneeze. Yeah, so, um, uh, oh, and there's all this, all this backstory about George Warman and uh, Mark Allen bought George Warman, or George Warman bought Mark Allen. Who, well, that's, that, that's the planes going over from London City. You notice them when it's quiet, not so much when it's really busy, and, and uh, they don't always go right over here. But, um, yeah, so, uh, oh, and, uh, there's this publisher's uh, got out of the dental market and now he's found a way to get back into the dental market and he's uh, deadly enemies with Ken Finlayson who's another publisher and oh my god you know you're like oh grow up you know so anyway but um, from, from our point of view it might have an impact because the BDIA have always been very good to us they you know put us on the association stand we give them a bit of publicity, they, they put us on the stand, it's worked very well. But I don't know if that's going to carry on under um, George Warman. He might decide that he want, also wants all his stands to make some money. Or um, he might decide, as the BDIA did, that um, they'd rather have a, an inclusive exhibition than, than an exclusive one, you know, one that excludes everybody who can't put their hand in their pocket and pay a few thousand to come. And it is a few thousand as well, because, uh, you know, I mean, even assuming that they gave us a minimal stand, and, and I mean, obviously, these, these are nice stands, um, but if you had to buy a stand, you're looking at three metres by two metres minimum, six square metres, and you'd be paying a three-figure sum for that, possibly a four-figure sum for that, and then you've got uh, two members of staff, so you can't have, um, you can't put one member of staff on a stand for three days, eight hours a day. You know, two members of staff, so then you've got two hotel rooms, um, which, you know, and you can't put them up in the Airbnb, which is where I've been staying. Um, so that's another, say, another £150 a night each, so that's 300 so three times, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, so that's three times 300 that's 900 plus your stand, say 1200 that's 2100 Then you've got travelling expenses and um, meals and... Uh, and that's before you even start to decide what you're going to do on the stand. I mean, that's just literally bringing a magazine and putting it on an empty stand. Then you've got to think the stand design, 
you know, £100 for a light bulb, £100 for an electric socket, £100 for lockable storage. Um, so, you know, this is for the smallest stand, the smallest stand. I mean, you, you know, if you can get, if you've got some change out of three grand, for the smallest stand, you'd be doing really well. And none of the associations have got that sort of cash to pay on, pay on uh, exhibitions. And besides, most of it's online now, you know. Someone comes along here and says, tell me about the association. I say, wait a minute, I'll just read it, what I've written on the website. Because what, what you do is you put, you put what you're about on the website, and then you think, oh, yeah, I forgot that. I'll put that on the website as well. And then, and then you think, oh, well, yeah, actually, there's a better way of explaining that. I'll change text on the website. And then, of course, the website then becomes sort of definitively the best way to explain to the members what the uh, association is all about to the point where you know you really are better off saying to them just have a quick look at the website um, because that's what we do I mean if anyone if I want to know what we do I look at the website <laughs> well it's logical it's just a long list of stuff it's such a long list of stuff you can't call it, keep it all in your head and if anyone wants to join, it's all done on the website. It's automatic. We pay so much a month, and there's to this vertical software provider, and they do all the, um, they do they do it all. You know, I mean, you can pay with credit card, you pay with PayPal, you can set up recurring payments, you can cancel your payments, you can update your details. It's all done online now. So if anyone in the old days, someone said they wanted to join, we used to whack a paper form on the thing and a, and a direct debit, a standing order in the old days, and. Uh, and then they would join up and then we would go back to the office and type it all up and scan it all and send it all off to the bank, put it in a spreadsheet, blah, blah, blah. Now we don't do any of that. There's no work involved in running this. Well, you know, it's the, uh, I mean, I mean, in the administration, the administration side of it's gone down. It's a lot easier now. But um, uh, the member support side is still uh, quite challenging. But anyway, so um, I have to see how it goes today. So Saturday, I suppose, technically, it used to be the busiest day because obviously in the old days when everyone was on the NHS, um, on a fee-for-item basis, there was quite a large opportunity cost to coming along to an exhibition. You used to use, lose a day's work. And, uh, you know, that could be by, could be anything up to £1,000. You, know, you were losing just by taking the day off work. And, of course, dentists didn't want to do that. And so they came on a Saturday, which is typically the day they didn't work. Uh, in the clinic and so uh, Thursday and Friday were um, sort of quite quiet and then Saturday was rammed so we'll have to wait and see but you know as I say people don't want to if you want if you're buying a chair and you want to poke a few chairs or if you want to buy a loops or some computer software and you want to see it demonstrated etc then all the hardware side of things is all here and that's great or if you want to see a new bit of kit like a new OPG or 3D scanner or something like that or a, a 3D milling machine, although I, I still say that um, probably um, IDS, the International Dental Showcase in Cologne, is the place to go if you really, really want to get excited by a dental exhibition. Now, let's face it, you know, it'd have to be pretty sad to get excited, but if you really want to see some, you know, like real, you know, futuristic eye opening stuff, then go and see what the Germans are up to because they are sort of 20 years ahead of us in terms of technology and engineering, etc. etc. And also, um, they're, they're, I've been looking for sort of fairly colourful things to photograph around here, and there's nothing colourful here. It's all a bit stainless steel, you know, it's all a bit grey. Uh, there's probably only two or three really bright stands, whereas at IDS, when you go round, every stand looks, looks, looks like a box of M&Ms. It's just amazing. They love their colour. Um, yeah, so, but then, you know, I suppose it's a, real, oh, it's a wealthier market, probably. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether the, that's a corporate effect. Whether the corporates are having that effect on the profession. Whether there are, you know, fewer sort of individual buyers now. So to, to you know, most of these guys are after big contracts, aren't they? They're not after the, the little guy anymore. So yeah. So that's in 2017, I think. Is next year is IDS hold it every other year. So I might see if I can uh, arrange to go to that. That was always quite a bit of fun, and it's not difficult to get to either. You have to sort of fly into Dusseldorf and then. Um, get the train to Cologne and it's the stop before Cologne so you can either stay in Cologne or you can either stay uh, what I do um, stay up the um, up the line at uh, Mulheim with a friend and uh, it's very easy to um, get on that hop on the train and then literally the exhibitions on the other end on the train um, 
Yeah, so what else? So it's been nice. We've had some members come up and talk to us. I've been sitting here working away. In fact, um, it's a different type of work because I'm, I'm I'm on the PC, so everyone thinks, oh, this guy's sitting there on the PC. But what they don't realise is I'm actually working as hard as they are and uh, possibly achieving slightly more. Uh, but as I say, it's a new world, you know, people are not, they don't want to come to meetings, they don't, well, if they want CPD, they want to do it online, they are not watching telly, they're watching YouTube, they are not, uh, in the old days, if you wanted to protest or you, you felt that uh, you wanted to change the world, you used to join an association, uh, march, uh, sign petitions, um, you know, pay subscriptions, hold local meetings, lobby, um, strike, you name it. No, I'm, advocating strikes but um, nowadays it's all uh, Facebook you know um, do you think dental fees should be put up or down give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then and people think by a thumbs up or a thumbs down on Facebook's changing the world and it's not really it's not unfortunately it's not um, but we have had one very very massive um, success which is that and we have d established definitively now that uh, PRS PPL is not payable by dentists. And this is something that um, should have been done years ago. The BDA should have done this years ago. So our advice to dentists and our members in particular, to whom it will go first, is that is not to pay PRS PPL because they will huff and they'll puff, and but they won't um, collect. They won't take you to court. And the reason for that is that um, there was a ruling in the European Court of Justice which, if they take anyone to court, will become incorporated, being deemed to be incorporated in UK law. So at the moment they can say, in UK law, turn up, um, you have to pay. And, um, and that's the BDA's line. In UK law, you have to says you have to pay, therefore you have to pay. Um, what we uh, have done is gone one step further than that and said, um, is it, you know, why hasn't the European Court of Justice ruling been incorporated in UK law? And that's because they've never taken anyone to court over it. And of course, if they don't take anyone to court, then their power to enforce it um, therefore disappeared. So we no power to enforce a law which is patently in train of being changed. Um, they, they are powerless. But that doesn't stop them running their racket, where they just write to dentists and say, uh, you know, they ring you up. Are you playing music in the surgery? And or I can hear music in the surgery. Is that you're playing music? And the receptionist says yes. Or she might say no, but they might say, well, you know, even if you occasionally play music, it doesn't matter what you say. I mean, the the, the, the script is still the same. Well, you've got to pay. But then they say it's double if you don't pay, and then half if you pay early. Blah blah blah. And. Um, so, um, having sort of told them, having told the members that um, that you don't have to pay, and having bought my own surgery in November, I thought I've got to, you know, do walk the talk. So, um, when they rang me up, they said, uh, "Do you play music in the surgery?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, play it all the time. Play it everywhere. We've got several radios. You know, going going to, you know, all the time we're here. Oh, oh, we should have heard them." Oh, oh. Oh, lovely. Oh, he's walked right into it. He's just dropped straight through the trap door. <laughs> so, they, oh, oh, did you know you have to pay? Oh, that poor bloke. I'll tell you what, I must. my staff were laughing at the end of the phone call. So I said, actually, as a matter of fact, um, you might find this interesting, but I don't have to pay. European Court of Justice, blah, 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 Society of Cartographia versus et cetera, et cetera. Gave him chapter and verse. Even the reference to the... Uh, the uh, Lex, lexicon thing of the lexica of the European Union, the justice ruling, etc., etc., etc. Then it gets, uh, you know, you get a reminder letter. Then it gets passed up the chain. Then you get passed up the chain. Then in in the end, I ended up talking to the senior legal guy, and then the senior legal guy said, "La la la, you have to pay." And I said, no, "We don't." And he said, "No, no, you're." He effectively, said, "No, you're not really a lawyer. You don't understand what you're talking about." And I said, "Well, okay, let's go to court, and then we'll get some lawyers, and then we can both decide who knows what they're talking about." And um, you know, and then he said, uh, "Well, look, you know, you don't have to pay three hundred. Suppose you just pay a <laughs> hundred, which is that was when I knew he'd, that was it. He'd lost because uh, the, basically they just wanted me to pay anything. I think if I'd offered to pay a pound, they would have accepted it. They would have said, "Yes, Mr. Watson, pay as much as you like for a pound," because it would have established, it would have sort of perpetuated the principle, and they could have then 
looked everybody in the face, and if anyone had said, oh, no, I don't have to pay, because, oh, what he, what he didn't have to pay, if what he didn't have to pay, why do I have to pay? And the answer is, and, and they would have said, well, actually, what he did pay, what he did accept the principle, they won't say what he paid a pound, they'll say, but no, actually, Mr Watson did agree, in the end, that he was liable. And so then, of course, the dentist say, oh, then there's your 300 quid, etc. But um, thanks to the association and the support of the association, the financial uh, who financially underwrote them, the, uh, the action plus the 85% um, of members who voted in favour of, of pushing it, you know, and I didn't mind being the guinea pig, I mean, you know. Um, because well, I was fairly sure of the outcome, as in so far as you can ever be sure of a legal outcome, and um, it all it's all panned out so far. No, I mean I might go back on Monday to find the bailiffs there, or um, or the I mean I, mean, I, won't, I won't, but um, you know um, the next stage will be for them to um, threaten to take me to court and pre pre enforcement action, legal, you know, asking me all my legal arguments, etc. But this is a few hundred quid. I mean, it had to go to the small claims court. It's a civil thing. It's not a criminal thing. Um, and uh, it's being under 10,000. They can't get their legal expenses back. And um, they'd only be entitled to the uh, the money plus interest, you know. Um, so, I mean, instead of getting 100, 120 quid they've asked for, they might get the 120 plus 8% interest for six months or something. It's 130. So, 130. So I can't see him doing it, to be honest. It's not, it's not worth their while suing me, even, uh, even assuming that it, it wouldn't be a disaster for them if they lost, and it would be, because they would lose hundreds of thousands of pounds of income if they lost, and, and there's a good chance they would. Even if there's a, a small chance that they would, they still won't do it. So, uh, yeah, so that's great. So that's something that was done by the DFO with the support of the members, with underwritten by funding, paid by you, member supported, changing... Uh, Terms and conditions, helping dentists in general practice, saving you money, saving you more than the cost of the subscription, and that, that one thing alone. Showing the BDA up to be what it is, totally ineffective, totally disinterested uh, in, uh, in issues which affect the day to day lives of um, general dental practitioners, willing to continue um, offering advice, wrong advice, um, misleading advice, um, disingenuous advice legally timid, cowardly advice uh, because uh, they don't care about your money. They don't, you know, it's your money, not theirs. They, they don't care. So um, that's good. So we're going to publicise that first to the members and then uh, and it's our big announcement at the exhibition. So anyone who cares to uh, ask, I tell. And now it's going out on to the members and it will go out on the website and in the email and then hopefully uh, it will get a bit of publicity um, sort of generally on GDP UK which is where a lot of people complain about this sort of thing. Um, some people still pay, they'll say well directly you know they could take you to court at any time you haven't established anything but I think that we have established once and for all that uh, they don't, there's a limit you know there's a line beyond which they don't go, that line is the line where you know they send they refer you to the debt collectors and you write back the nuts and um, and that's it no further action okay people are starting to drift in so um, I hope the exhibition goes well and if you have come along and dropped in then it was very nice to see you and if not then uh, and you've got anything to say about the contents of this video or want to get in touch then please do the details will be down below all right okay Talk to you soon. Bye.